So now we will see the status flags of 8086 microprocessor. Now in 8086 microprocessor, the status flags are divided in two categories. Or we can say it is flags, flags of flag 8086 processor. So uh, uh, these flags are divided in two categories. One is machine control flag. Machine control flags and second is status flags. So the purpose of purpose of status flag is uh, suppose our processor is performing certain uh, arithmetic or logical operation then what is the result of that operation the status of that result is reflected by status flag means uh, suppose if you are adding two numbers then uh, after the addition, whether one carry is generated or not. So, if carry is generated, then there is one flag, one one uh, bit is there in 16 bit register, which will set. So, by seeing that bit, we can immediately identify that yes, after the performance of this addition, one carry was generated. So, or if we are subtracting two numbers, right, and if result is zero, so uh, this condition will be reflected by status flag. So, uh, there are status flags which reflects the result of some arithmetic or logical operation which is performed by microprocessor. And machine control flags are those flags which are used to control the operation of the machine is operation of of the microprocessor right so in this way there are two categories of flags so in total there are uh, six status flags so there are six flags status flags and there are three machine control flags. So as we know that the architecture, internal architecture of 8086 processor is a 16 bit. So there is a 16 bit uh, uh, register uh, which store the store these six flags and three flags. Right? And that register is called as PSW program status word program status word so word means in terms of bit if we say then this word indicates it is 16 bit right because we know that nibble nibble is 4 bit byte it is uh, 8 bit and word word is 16 bit and long word is 32 bit like this so uh, this is a program status word right after the program what are the status of the result so that is stored in a 16 bit register and that is called as program status word. So I will draw this this 16 bit register here, a register which is having 16 bits. Now bit number D0. D1, D2, 
टू डी थ्री डी फोर डी फाइव डी सिक्स डी सेवन डी एट डी नाइन डी टेन डी इलेवन डी ट्वेल्व डी थर्टीन डी फोर्टीन एंड डी फिफ्टीन थ्री आर दिक्सटीन बिट्स ऑफ फ्लैट रजिस्टर पी एस डब्ल्यू सो दिस डी फिफ्टीन बिट इज योर एम एस बी एंड डी जीरो बिट इज एल एस बी सो इन दिस देर आर सिक्स स्टेटस फ्लैक्स राइट सो दिस टोटल सिक्सटीन बिट रजिस्टर इफ मीन से दिस इज दीज आर दोअर एट बिट जी डी जीरो टू डी सेवन राइट दीज आर द लोअर एट बिट्स ऑफ प्रोग्राम स्टेटस वर्ड रजिस्टर इन दीज लोअर एट बिट्स फाइव स्टेटस फ्लैक्स यू विल फाइंड इन लोअर एट बिट्स राइट एंड दीज आर फर्स्ट डी सेवन बिट इज फॉर साइन साइन फ्लैग राइट इट इज इट वी इंडिकेटेड बाई एस सो दिस एस मीन्स दिस इज साइन फ्लैग सो इफ द रिजल्ट ऑफ एनी ऑपरेशन इज ए पॉजिटिव नंबर और इफ इट इज ए नेगेटिव नंबर सो दैट विल बी रिफ्लेक्टेड बाई दिस दिस पर्टिकुलर बिट सो इफ दिस बिट इज if this bit is uh, i write here if s is 0 this means the result is positive right so how the positive number will represent for a positive number the msp bit is 0 right suppose we represent we want to represent plus 2 by if you want to represent plus 2 by 8 bits right then what will happen uh, the eighth bit right uh, which is the eighth bit represent the sign of the number so it is zero and from seventh to seventh sixth fifth fourth third second and first these are the eight bits and remaining seven bits from first to seven these seven bits will represent the magnitude so magnitude of 2 is 0 here we write 0 0 0 0 1 0 so if this is the result after certain operation so this indicates that it is a positive number because the msb is 0 so whatever is the msb that will be stored at d7 bit so this is the case when we are performing operation over 8 bit number right so 8086 processor is a 16 bit processor but it can also perform the operation over 8 bit numbers right it can perform over 16 bit and it can also perform the operation over 8 bit numbers so if you, if processor is performing some arithmetic operation or uh, uh, arithmetic operation over the signed numbers on the 8 bit to 8 bit numbers then after the result if the if the result is uh, positive then this bit will zero and if this bit is 1 if s is 1 so this indicates that result is negative so this is a status flag now after d7 there is d6 bit position and we denote it by z right so this so this is status flag 1 and second z means zero flag so after the result of certain operation uh, after the uh, this uh, operation of on certain numbers if the result is zero suppose we are subtracting to uh, same numbers 7 minus 7 so result will be zero so if result is zero then this this particular flag will set so if 
at any point of time after certain operation if this bit is zero this indicates that after the uh, say after the operation the result is zero right so if z is equal to zero result is zero right and if z is equal to one this means result is non zero right some uh, number is there uh, after a certain operation the result is non zero now after this bit number d5 is not in use right this bit position is not having any significance and bit number d4 is denoted by ac right auxiliary carry flag auxiliary carry flag right so if we are performing uh, suppose addition over uh, to 8 bit numbers or 16 bit numbers and if a carry is generated from lower nibble right uh, then ac flag will set lower nibble means suppose uh, we take the example of 8 bit number two 8 bit numbers uh, suppose 73 H in H means this is hexadecimal. So uh, we represent in, in the normal practice in uh, programming of microprocessor or microcontroller is we represent the number by uh, hexadecimal number system, right? And another number is suppose eight four. So seventy three, and we want to add this number, these numbers. So seventy three is zero one one one. In eight bit, we have to represent, and three is this is seven. Three is zero zero one one. Right? Same way, eighty four. Eighty four. We represent one zero zero zero. Four is zero one zero zero. Right? So if we want to add these numbers, so this is the nibble. Right? This is the nibble four bit, lower four bits. So this is lower four bits, and this is higher four bits. so auxiliary carry will be affected only with lower nibble only right so if while performing addition at these two bit position right in the lower nibble if any carry is generated so that will set the auxiliary carry flag right so in this case if we add that it is 1 1 1 0 1 1 1 1 so when while we are adding these two bits there is no carry generated right so in this case your ac flag will remain zero now if in place of these numbers if suppose we are having uh, some other number like this if it is 1 1 so this number is this is 7 and this is 1 0 1 1 so it is 11 means b so this is b 7 b h and this is 8 and this c 8 c h now if we add these two numbers then what is the result 1 plus 0 is 1 1 plus 0 is 1 0 plus 1 is 1 now 1 plus 1 is 0 and 1 carry is generated right now 1 plus 1 is 0 another carry is generated like this we can continue but we have to since we are talking about auxiliary carry flag then we 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 have to concentrate here only so when we are adding the uh, highest bit of lower level which is this bit position so 1 plus 1 is 0 and from here carry is generated so in this case your auxiliary carry flag will set right so basically auxiliary carry flag is used internally by the processor Uh, when uh, when we have to uh, use the bcd numbers right which is used for normal display <coughs> so we'll talk about this uh, afterward so as a regarding flag if carry generated from lower nibble then ac flag will set right 
otherwise reset otherwise it will remain zero okay now after this bit number d3 position is also not in use and then uh, d2 bit position is denoted by p right so p i will write here So P is parity flag, right? So uh, now after the operation of eight bit number, whatever result eight bit result we are having, if the result is having even number of ones, then parity flag will set, right? So we take again example uh, 73 plus uh, 44. Uh, these two numbers we want to add. 73 is 0, 1, 1, 1. 3 is 0, 0, 1, 1. 4, 4. 4 is 8, 4, 0, 1. 8, 4, 0, 1. Okay. Now uh, we have to perform the addition. So, so so now these numbers are in uh, some registers of the processor or somewhere and processor is adding these two numbers, right? In the ALU section, arithmetic and logical unit. So after the addition uh, in the ALU section, what is the result? So that are reflected by these flags actually, right? So in this case the result is 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1 plus 1 is 0 and carry generated and this is 1. So this is the 8 bit result. So now what about the parity flag? If the result 8 bit result contains even number of 1's then parity flag will set. So how many 1's are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So there are 6 number of 1's. Right? So, number of ones are even. If the, there are even number of ones, then parity flag will set. So, in this case, this flag, P will set. This position will set. So, at any point of time, if you find this bit position after arithmetic and logical operation, 1. This indicates that the 8 bits uh, uh, are having even number of ones. Right? So, and here you just uh, understand one more point. If processor is performing operation over two 16 bit numbers, right? So the result will be 16 bit, but for the parity flag to set or reset, only the number of ones of lower 8 bit will be considered, right? For example, uh, 7342. This is one number and 2, 3, 4, 9. This is one number. If we perform the addition, right? Then uh, what is the addition? 9 plus 2, 9 A B. 4 plus 4 is 8. 3 plus 3 is 6. 7 plus 2 is 9. This is the result. So 9, 6, 8 B. 9, 6, 8 B in binary we will write. 9 is 1, 0, 0, 1. 6 is 0, 1, 1, 0. 8, 1, 0, 0, 0 and B is uh, 11 means 1, 0, 0, 1. So this is the 16 bit result. Right? When we are performing operation over two 16 bit numbers. So this is one 16 bit number. This is another 16 bit number. This is the result. Right? So uh, uh, what, what will happen to the parity flag? So parity flag will consider only lower 8 bits of result. So here the lower 8 bits are these. So here the number of 1's are 1, 2, 3. There are 3 1's which is odd. So in this case parity flag will not set. It will remain as it is. Right? So this is parity flag. It sets if 8 bits 8 bits or lower 8 bits of 
16 bit result contains even number of ones then it will set otherwise it will remain a reset now after parity flag the next bit position is of no use and after this bit number d0 is represented by cy and cy is carry flag so uh, for the carry flag uh, during the addition of 8 bit or a 16 bit number if a final carry is generated from the msv side then carry flag will set right so when we talk about two 8 bit numbers then suppose these are the numbers 1 1 0 0 0 0 1 1 another is 0 1 1 1 1 1 0 0 suppose these are the two numbers and we are adding these numbers Right? So what will happen here? 1 plus 0, 1, 1 plus 0, 1, 0 plus 1, 1, 0 plus 1, 1, 0 plus 1, 1, 0 plus 1, 1, 1 plus 1, 0. And here there is one carry. Now 1 plus 1 plus 0 is 0 and a carry is generated here. So when the carry is generated at from final bit position from the MSV, right? This is the MSV. If carry is generated from MSV bit position, then the carry flag will set, right? This is about the 8 bit. If we are uh, performing operation over 16 bit, then also from the 16th bit, if carry is generated, then this flag will set, right? So uh, CY is equal to 1, it will set if carry generated from most significant bit MSP and most significant bit of 8 bit or 16 bit number right during addition And the same carry flag is also used for the subtraction, right? So during the subtraction, if a borrow is required, suppose uh, we are doing this 07 minus uh, 09. Suppose this operation we are performing. So in this case, what will happen? To perform this subtraction, one borrow is required. So in this case also, your carry flag will set. Right? And if we are subtracting this 09 minus 07, so in this case no borrow is required, so in this case carry flag will reset. So basically carry flag is used for addition as well as for subtraction. So if we are performing addition, then uh, if the MSV bit generates one bit, one carry, uh, while performing operation over 8 bit or 16 bit number right then carry flag will set or if borrow is required during subtraction then carry flag will set and basically we we see this carry flag when we are performing operation over unsigned numbers numbers we are performing operation over unsigned numbers so we know that in binary number system we can represent the numbers in two ways one by signed numbers another by unsigned numbers so carry flag will have an utility only if the if we are using unsigned numbers right and if we are using signed numbers then and another flag, flag will come in the picture and that is called as overflow flag and its, bit, its position is bit number D11. This is represented by OV, overflow flag, right? So, uh, I will write here, OV means overflow flag. So, 
This flag is used when we are performing operation over signed numbers. Signed numbers, right? So if if the result of a signed number is beyond the storing capacity of a register, then this overflow flag will set. Otherwise, it will remain reset. So we will take one uh, one or two lectures to discuss about the representation of signed numbers and unsigned numbers and the conditions which are there for for making overflow flag set or reset. So uh, because generally students they have uh, always they have a confusion between uh, overflow flag carry flag they understand what is carry flag flag no flag but what is overflow flag. There they get confused. So we will uh, take one additional lecture to discuss about carry flag and overflow flag. But just now you just understand uh, when we are dealing with unsigned numbers, then we have to check carry flag. When we are dealing with signed numbers, then we have to check overflow flag. Right? So these are one, two, three, four, five, six. These are the status flags. Now there are three machine controlled flags. Now these machine control flags are <coughs> these machine control flags are one direction flag second interrupt flag and third <coughs> trap flag and the B positions are from D tenth it is direction flag at D9 interrupt flag at D8 it is trap flag right so uh, the meaning of direction flag is uh, if direction flag is zero, then microprocessor operates in auto increment mode. If direction flag is zero, mu p means microprocessor operates in auto increment mode right it is direction mode auto increment means from lower to higher side what is the meaning of this auto increment that I will explain and if the direction flag is 1 then microprocessor operates in auto decrement mode right so you just think about one situation suppose this is uh, the memory and in the memory uh, let us assume this is the some address 0 0 0 0 0 h right and uh, <coughs> From this address <coughs> up to 0, 0, 0, 0, 5 H. <coughs> These are six memory locations. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. These are six memory locations. At six memory locations, we are having some data. Right? So number is there. Now there is some other locations 0 0 0 1 0 H and up to 0 0 0 1 5 H. Okay. Now what we want, we want that whatever is there at this location at 0 0 0 0 0 H. At this location, that data I want to transfer here at this location. Right? 0 0 0 
10x. So some 8-bit number is stored here. That 8-bit number I want to store at this location. After storing this, I will take another number, which is at location 00, 0, 0, 0 1x. Right? Here. This is one 8-bit number. After this, 0, 0, 0, 0 1, x. So this number I will transfer at new location 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, x. So this number will go to 0, 0, 0, uh, 1, 1, x. And after this 0, 0, 0, 0, 2, x content will go to 0, 0, 0, 1, 2, x in this way. Right? So what, what we will do? This is this address where our source data is there. That address we will store in some uh, register of 8086 processor. Right? So basically, this source address is stored in a register called as SI, source index register, right? Which indicates that uh, this is whatever is the content of this register, that is the address of our source data. And for our destination, what is the starting address of our destination, that I will store in another register DI, right? And once the microprocessor will transfer one byte from 0, 0, 0, 0, 0H to this location. Once one byte has been transferred this place, then automatically what we have to do? Whatever is in SI, it has to be increased to next location, right? So it has to be, so initially it was having this value and now it should have this value. And what about in DI? Initially DI has this address and after transferring one byte, the DI value should be increased by one. So this is called as auto increment mode. So after transferring one byte, automatically the value of SI will be increased by one, which indicates the address of source address of my second byte. And the value of DI will be increased by one. So it will become 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, which indicates the address of my destination. Right? So and once this second byte is transferred, then automatically again the value of SI is increased by 1 and value of DI will increased by 1. So this is called as auto increment mode. So if we will make this bit position 0, so then microprocessor operates in auto increment mode. Right? Now to transfer these bytes, there is one another method is there. If suppose we take the highest location, this, whatever byte is stored here. 0, 0, 0, 0, 5 x this we have to transfer at 0, 0, 0, 1, 5 x right so this we have to transfer at this so if this address we store in SI and this address we store in DI then after transferring one byte what we have to do we have to reduce the address of SI by 1 so that it should become 0, 0, 0, 0 4H and DI should also be reduced by 1 0, 0, 0, 1, 4H so now this is your SI and this is your DI this means the from of below this whatever is the address that white has to be transferred at 0, 0, 0, 1, 4H right once that byte has been transferred, again you reduce the value of SI by 1 and DI by 1. So in this way, that is also the way how we can transfer the numbers. Either we start from the lowest location and move towards the higher location. Or we start from higher location and move towards the lower location. So if second is the case, right? if we make the direction flag 1, if we make direction flag 1, then microprocessor will operate in auto decrement mode. Means in that case, in SI we have to load 0, 0, 0, 0, 0.005H and in DI we have to load 0, 0, 0, 0.0015H, highest location. After transferring the, that byte, these values will be automatically decremented. So this thing, this particular auto increment and auto decrement uh, mode will be controlled by the processor if direction flag is 1 1 or 0 right so we will we will see about this particular uh, example uh, other direction flag application of direction flag when we will do some programming examples right now sec this second machine control flag is interrupt flag right? it 
is denoted by I. So, what is the interact? Basically, uh, if some uh, extraordinary uh, uh, things occur outside the processor, then we have to intimate the processor that some exception uh, uh, occurred. Now you have to take care of that exception, right? So in this way, we have to interrupt the process, interrupt the processor uh, to indicate them some uh, extraordinary things happened outside the processor. Now you take care of this, right? So in this way, we have to interrupt the process, processor. And suppose for example, uh, we are having, we have developed a system or simple example we take, uh, we are having mouse, right? When we click the mouse, so this is some uh, uh, exception for the processor, right? When we click the mouse, then we, we have to interact the processor and we have to inform that, uh, that uh, mouse, we have clicked the left button of the mouse and then processor will take care of that. So in this way we have to interact the processor uh, by, by using interrupts. So if i is 1, if this bit is 1, then maskable interrupts are enabled. Right? And if this is 0, then maskable interrupts are disabled. Basically, interrupts are of two types. One is maskable. Maskable interrupt. Second is non-maskable. Right? So, maskable interrupts means those interrupts which we can disable. Right? Suppose we, we don't want that our controller's processor should be interrupted by under these when these type of conditions occur outside then we can disable those interrupts and there are few interrupts which which are non maskable mean they are disabled mean that is a, uh, extraordinary condition occur so uh, that type of interrupts we cannot disable so there are two types of interrupts maskable and non maskable and this flag i interrupt flag is used or maskable interest because non maskable we cannot disable so there is uh, uh, no application of this flag right so this flag if this bit is zero so we can disable the interrupts and which type of interrupts we can disable we can disable only maskable interrupts so if uh, this flag is one then maskable interrupts are enabled and if this flag is zero then maskable interrupts are disabled and the last is uh, regarding interrupts also we will uh, discuss in detail uh, in coming lectures and the so last uh, direction flag uh, machine control flag is trap trap flag now uh, if this flag sets then our microprocessor enters in single step execution mode right uh, what is the meaning of single step execution? Suppose here we have written uh, these type of instructions, right? This is our uh, first instruction and this is our last instruction. So generally what happened when this, this is a program code which we have written and we have stored in uh, the code memory. So the microprocessor will first take first byte, it will, it will fetch the first byte it will decode it, it will execute it. Then it will come to the next instruction, the next instruction. In this way, it will in sequence, it will go and it will execute up to the last instruction. Now, uh, in case of single step execution mode, what will happen? Microprocessor will first execute this instruction and it will stop. Again, you have to give command for the execution of the next instruction. Then controller will processor will execute next instruction and again it will stop. So in this way, if trap trap flag we keep one, if we set this flag, then microprocessor will enter in single step execution mode. So 
On every time you have to give one command, then only processor will execute particular instruction. After that, it will stop. So, what is the purpose of this particular uh, single step execution mode? So, it is used for debugging of the program. Suppose we have written these set of instructions, and uh, upon execution of the instruction, we are not getting the correct result. There is some error in our program. So what we can do? We can we can set this flag, trap flag, right? Then we can execute this instruction, right? Suppose here, uh, okay. After execution of this instruction, we we can monitor the the result, right? After execution of this instruction, whether what whatever this instruction is expected to perform, that operation is done or not, right? Uh, so that we have to, uh, we can check if it is correct. We are getting the result. This means this instruction is correct. Then we will execute this instruction. After execution of this instruction, again processor will stop, and we will check the results, right? So in this way, one by one, we we can execute the instruction and check the result. Maybe at this particular time when we are executing this instruction, this particular instruction, so whatever result we were expecting. We are not getting result after the execution of this instruction. So immediately we can identify there is some error, there is some bug in this particular instruction, and we can rectify this. So this is about the uh, all flag status uh, register, and remaining bits are not in use. Right?